Right, what are we saying? Lower day. I've just played football yesterday. We've got the dogs out. Me and Kadeem going to absolutely smash it. Today is going to be... Well, Tibbs, he's done some fashion training already. He's, he's in the fashion yeah. now, fashion guru. Building from the ground up. <laughs> Tibbs, calves. I'm personally doing step ups, hip flexors, superset, and then front squat Nordics, superset. Yeah. You're going to do split squats and step ups, right, instead of the front squats. Exactly. Yeah, Hit Nordics too. But uh, yeah, I want to focus more on rebalancing from side to side today. Um, but yeah, pretty similar. Amazing. Amazing. Let's go. So yeah. Always got the dogs out <laughs> in the garden. Ground Faster training. Oh, I'm gonna start knee flossing. Off. Forgot. Yeah, even I'm gonna though, start off with uh, bend the knee extensions to warm up. Even though, like, I don't need the knee flossing anymore. I just love it. It makes it feel great. Like, I do it before my games. Do it before training sessions. Like, as soon as you take it off, it just feels amazing. If you've got knee pain, like, this is one of the quickest ways to, like, kind of help it disappear obviously it's not just gonna go away for good but it can like kind of go away for a brief amount of time get rid of the pain you're experiencing at that point in time can help you get into deep range of the motion so pretty much every day you ought to be flossing if you have knee issues oh. if you're not you're just missing out on gains what do you think about flossing Kadir? yeah i mean there's a reason why they're also called voodoo flossmans you know uh they they can actually do magic i've seen magic with my knees, with, with clients I've used them for. Look, just makes it easier to get into the deep knee bend. I mean, Liam can get into the deep knee bend, no problem, but it still gets that effect of restricting the blood flow. And then when you take them off, a lot of blood rushes into that area. Makes your knee feel, feel different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can do it in a few different ways as well. Like you see here how it's gone from like above and below. Depends on the issues you have. If you have patellar tendonitis, put it more on the Tele tendon if you have like I find like for people that struggle with knee bend more I like it wrapped around the entire thing whereas if it's just like a a pain I like one above one below for like the blood flow restriction but yeah. depends on situation to situation yeah. I usually do banding the extensions as well but Kadeem's on it so just go straight into Tibbs oh yeah like I say like I played football yesterday what did I do about 60 minutes yesterday yeah probably about 60 minutes and yeah i feel pretty good not really sore at all and i've only just started playing football again i have a, a slight knock on my ankle from that snap challenge if you've seen it on my instagram stories <laughs> but i bet that as soon as i get blood flow as soon as everything starts working it's going to disappear like you don't want to if I would have had a knock yesterday, like in the past, I would have probably iced it. Yeah, that's probably the worst thing you can do. Like, if you have a knock in a game, like, just floss it. <laughs> Straight away, just floss it. Get the block like, going. even for the ankle. Um, but, yeah. I'm going to do... What kind of cast are you doing? I'm going to do straight leg. Yeah, Car straight face. leg. Same. Yeah, like, feeling that when I go into the deep stretch. I can feel it kind of on my left side where I got a knock in the game yesterday. So we we'll, we'll probably won't go as heavy today, but go higher reps, go really slow. Squeezing the tip up at the bottom, trying to get as far as I can without any pain in it. Like I can feel right down in that bottom stretch position, there's a little bit of pain. So I'm just gonna go slightly before that. And then as I work through the sets, try and go deeper and deeper into it until I can get to that point, full stretch with no pain. Kadeem's doing the flossing as well. Yeah, feeling good. You had patella tendonitis, like how was flossing for that? Because my main thing was, like, the worst thing for me was like, the ACL, meniscus, cartilage damage, where I couldn't get the full knee bend, it was like yeah. inside the knee. Tendon yeah. issues were there, but they weren't, yeah. I wouldn't say it was as bad as yeah. that stuff. So what do you think of the benefits for the, the tendon issues? For me, it was a lot of the mental side as well, because when I used to get into deep knee bends, I like avoided this right side so much. Mm. Used to avoid this right side so much. Deep knee bends wouldn't feel good. And after kind of going heavier on, on an exercise, my knees wouldn't feel nice. They would feel like achy and stuff. But then if I, if I would then do the flossing, it would just feel so amazing. And that also helps for, for like the mental side, you know, okay, you're finishing. You can do yep. flossing before the workout, finish off with flossing. Like, if it makes you feel good, man, 
do it. Yeah, it's yeah, hundred really... percent. That, that that thing where you touched on there with the mental side of it, it's like I've talked to a lot of people that are scared to get into certain positions, even if they don't have pain in that position anymore, just because of like the mental side of stuff of like oh like it's PTSD like I used to have this pain in this position yeah. so I don't want to go there so it's like if you have that floss band and like I tell them yeah the floss bands is going to help you in that position like you have nothing to worry about they're then going to be able to get into it exactly so it's not just the benefit of the actual like physical but the mental as well but yeah you don't want to become reliant on the floss bands but like use them as much as possible like I like like on the deep knee bend stuff I'd probably start off the session with flossing and then say I go into like an ATG split squat I would go one set without, see kind of my range of the day. One set with, and then one set without again. Depending on how bad it is. If it's real bad, I'll probably just do four of the sets. Like you see me doing the cough raises now. Lee and the preparing for the tip, tip bar. By the way, tip bars. Before I've used them the first time, I couldn't imagine how much of a difference it makes for the stretch she's in right now. Yeah. See, if you're struggling with ankle mobility, this stretch you're getting right there. In the amazing. bottom flex the calves down so you flex yeah. the opposite muscle like this stretch especially for footballers like if you look like when you're going to kick a football you're going for it like that so yeah. the more mobile you are through there the easier you're going to stroke for the ball and keep that foot in that position yep. so tip bar is great tip stretch is great but in that bottom position like flex exactly the calves down and we're doing this lower leg work before we actually move into like the compound lifts the main lifts because you have to be building from the ground up, right? Strengthening the ankles, the front of the ankles here. A lot of people just add in some cough raises and think, okay, this is my lower leg stuff. But actually you have an opposite side, you have the tips and you want to be really attacking that whole lower leg because if you just build up the strength here, through the hips, through the upper body even, but you don't have the, like the lower legs to navigate that power, it's, it's really not going to end well. But yeah. I mean, if I think back, <laughs> The only thing I might have done in the past was a couple of cough raises. Yeah. And I was done. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I played in PDCs and elites for pro footballers, and we didn't really do much strength training at all, if any. And uh, it was, if we did, it was powering up the hips. So it was, yeah. <laughs> it was the complete opposite. But I also like it because obviously I'm focused on knees. I like it because obviously the tip attaches just below the knee, around the knee, and so do the calves, like the gastric attaches like at the back of the knee. So it's like if you get into the tips and the calves first, it's just, especially with people coming with, with actual major knee injuries and stuff, yeah. it's like getting work around the knee without first going into it. And I just find like, it's like going into the, the knee work after doing something like tips and calves is so much easier yeah. just because you feel like okay like I've got a pump around like my knees feeling a little bit better like and it gets over again that yeah. mental hurdle of going straight exactly you feel more into, confident into the knees 100%. let's go heavy let's go. on this and like like tip braces don't don't solve all but it, it was a thing of like like Kadeem said like everyone kind of knew calf raises so everyone knew ankle extension like we're we're about balancing the entire body so <clears throat> we do ankle flexion ankle extension knee flexion knee extension hip flexion hip extension it's not just one or the other it's it's all in all so yeah tib, tib raises might not solve everything but if you're not training them you're missing out on something like why not train yeah, the muscle exactly like if you're training your calf train your tibs and you still need to get super strong in the calf super strong in the solace especially so this is can have so much strength on it. So see calf raises, you want to load those bad boys up. We're not saying go light at all. Like the regressions are there for the people that need the regressions. But if someone comes to me and their tibs are super strong on the tib bar, I'm not going to make them do wall tib raises. Or if their calves are super yeah. strong on the seated calf raise, I'm not going to make them do KOT calf raises to a certain extent. The KOT calf raises I do like though for the isometric on yeah. the knee rather than <laughs> the crazy. rather than the actual benefit to the calf so i would probably add like a seated calf as well as the kot's because like if you do sled like we we done it the other day we done three rounds sleds and then tibs and kot calves and you come off the sled and you're pumped up in the quad and then you have to hold 
that isometric while doing the KOG yeah. calf and the VMO absolutely lights up and what you're getting work into the tendons, you're getting work into the knee behind the isometric. I think that's like the real benefit. <sighs> exactly. So what I'm doing here at the end is just pulsing in that bottom position, getting that stretch. We like this for a lot of exercise actually. Getting to like on this tip, tip raise are here. I, I go to failure just once before the workout. Obviously you can do more sets, but yeah. If you think about it like this, if before every single lower body day you have, you go to failure with the tips, with the coughs, you're gonna be good. Like, yeah, also, long, like you said, like the long length par partials, like, definitely if it's gone, he's like a science based, like, like hy hypertrophy bodybuilder kind of guy, if you don't know if he is, probably you do know, but he, like, even for hy hypertrophy, like, he's showing up those long length partials, like, in the end range, he is building more muscle. So, yeah. for pretty much everything, like, I always, in the end, I'll just do the ch -ch -ch, if it's a calf, so it's. Range. Whatever. Yeah. Like you wanna you can do that in the end, get some more muscle growth, get some more hypertrophy. Alright, what's next? I might do some some a little bit of plyos to be honest. Yeah. Now two up, one down. Before actually now. Nah, I done football yesterday, so I don't really need to. I do them on Thursday. So I will go into superset of dreams now. Yeah. So yeah, Kadeem's gone to get the ATG buddies. We're gonna do two different variations of, of step ups. Um I'm gonna do Patrick step ups because one of my main issues coming back from knee injury was my ankle mobility. Um, it's a little stiff now because I played football yesterday, I told you I had the ankle thing. So we'll try and get through that, we'll start at a lower height. And then and then build it up. He's going to do poliquins because he foc he's focusing more on knee. So the poliquins are where you have whatever it is, whether it's a slant board, HG bodies underneath the heel. And you're lowering down, that's making the knee come more forward. You see how like if I have my heel down and I'm at this height, my knee's left forward than if I have my heel raised like that. It takes the ankle mobility out of it a little bit. So you can directly focus on that knee a bit more. So if if your ankle mobility is not too bad, I would do that if you're focusing more on your knee. The Patrick step up's a good one to start with because it's like him both best of both worlds. Like you get the dorsiflexion, you increase your ankle mobility and you increase your knee, knee strength at the same time. So you're not building like strong knees on weak ankles, you're building them both at the same time and like I say stiff in the ankle today so we'll see how much we can do I might have to put the floss bands on my ankle to do this today but yeah here he comes man himself score did you start That's with perfect. Pat Patrick's or did you always do Poliquins I never really done Patrick's you never really done Patrick's no it's your ankle mobility how's your ankle mobility mm, it's all right yeah yeah this side is still better though than yeah. this, but it's all right. But yeah, it's perfect. I saw from the ground up here as well. Oh. Super set of dreams. Build up over time. Ooh. Each set go a little bit higher. Tight. Um, yeah. You see, like, we, we start on two inch step up. Yeah. I can do eight inch step up. I'm still starting on two inch just to get the knee warm to build up over time. Like, it's, it's such a joint dominant motion that I mean, once your knee's absolutely fine, you probably could go into the higher reps, the, the higher thing, whatever, to start with. But even now my knee's good, I still like to go from um, low height to high height and then like build up the weight as well. Do like loads of sets yeah. just so that knee is grooving, it's feeling so much better. If I do it that way, I find that I'm able to actually end up doing way more than what I would be able to do if I just jumped into one of the higher things so just i just do high reps um absolutely low height to start with and then as i go more i go higher height less reps but depends on if if you've got knee issues at the moment if you do have knee issues at the moment high reps on the step ups are, are good no matter what so yep. for like the first two two three years i don't think i've done less than like 20 reps yeah on, on step wow. ups yeah you got to be patient man <laughs> so this short range as well like on the compounds like HG split squats, you can you can do like higher reps, but I pro I prefer doing lower reps because it's more compound. You have got so many yeah. things working, so I like to go slower tempo if I have any issues on HG split squat, and then higher reps on a step up. Get out of there! Get out of here! Yeah, and then the super set of dreams. I've coined that term. In between step ups, elephant walks, and couch stretch. It's just because like. I personally like it. Obviously, HG Science done an amazing YouTube video on it as well. But I like it because it's short range. So you're getting this muscle contraction in that short range. You're working it there. 
muscles in that shortened position and then you lengthen out the tissues on both of the sides of the knee after you do the short range so you're building strength here and then you're lengthening the tissues out and it just makes it feel so good when you go into your next set of step ups it's going to feel like like butter exactly. what do you think of the super i mean you're probably going to be talking into the mic right now but <laughs> you want to speak on the super set of dreams and how i introduced it to you yeah super set of dreams honestly like it it's you have all these exercises right you have the elephant walks the cow stretch you have the polycon step ups but it makes such a huge difference to combine certain exercises in certain ways and as liam has just explained it's about this is this is the main exercise we want to improve in like the polycon step ups really getting that knee stronger connective tissue but then this the elephant walks and the cow stretches we do in between the sets allows us to really go harder as well and make more gains feel feel better because in the end if you, if you like when you jump straight into a higher elevation you might not feel as good and it for me personally made such a huge difference to actually start low and each step build up slightly and that's how you can also test out your your limit right you might tell yourself ah this this is my limit here but what if you actually built up through three four sets even five six sets and go really to that limit where you feel okay now i'm going hard it's good perfect do some flossing afterwards and then get into maybe an atg split squat so we're going to do it right here as we go through this workout but yeah this is this is really it second set feels better first one this is the goal yeah and couch stretch is probably one of the things i see people tightest in like if you have super tight quads it's going to be pulling on your knee it's going to be pulling on your quad tendon on your patella tendon yep. so it could be one of the causes of knee pain for you so getting into a couch stretch might be hard to start with you can use one of the best thing like regressions is either doing it on a bench like this where your foot's not flush up against the wall so you can get a, bit, a little bit less starting further down here so the stretch isn't as much on the quads and then the third one is like an incline bench and you can kind of adjust the angle and it makes it easier to get into. Kadeem just put his ass in my face. <laughs> get out of the way. <laughs> and yeah, on, on your weaker sides, whatever it is, you can always add an extra set to kind of balance it out. Like, we don't want... Because if you... Well, for example, my left knee was my biggest issue. So I always done, started on my left and finished on my left. So I do an extra set on that yep. because we don't want our ability to go up like this. We want it to go up like this and match each other because it's been shown in studies, the more imbalances you have, quad size to quad size, leg to leg, front to back, the more injuries are gonna occur. So if you can balance out stuff, like do it ASAP, work on it. Do an extra set on the weaker side. Absolutely, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Like even if you get stronger on your on your better side, your body's not gonna be as bulletproof as you think, right? You're only as strong as your weakest link. So bringing that weak link up, seeing the next one, like you're never not gonna see a weak link. But that's the whole goal of it. Like bring that one weak link you know you have up, then work on the next one. And that's how you keep keep on getting better and better. It's like. Yeah, it's, it's really, you never stop, really. You never stop working on, on your knee or whatever, like. Working on anything, there's anything. always. Now, there will always be an imbalance, whether it's imbalances in your actual muscles and your tendons and your ligaments, or if it's just imbalances lift to lift. So obviously the polyquin kind of root of stuff was to get structurally balanced and it looks at numbers. So it's like, your front squat has to be like, Things like 75 or 80 percent of your back squat and then your sigamon has to be 66 percent of your back squat and all these kind of stuff atg have got the standards and the numbers as well but obviously everything doesn't have to be equally as strong in terms of like i said 66 percent sigamon compared to back squat but it's like these strength numbers have been shown to like well again anecdotally to be shown to like have the least injuries so there's always going to be an imbalance. If you bring up your squat too fast and your seat of good morning isn't coming up, then you need to focus more on the seat of good morning. And whatever exercise you do first in the day 
that's what's going to get better. So if you do have a weak posterior cha chain, do that first. If you have a weak step up, do that first. If you have a weak squat, do that first. Whatever you do first is, is going to get better. And by first, he doesn't mean like jumping straight into that exercise, right? Because that's what we're doing here. We're building up through the, through the ankles, through the lower legs to actually feel good in that exercise. We really want to push. And then obviously after that, you can add in a lot. We're going to do hip flexors as well. It's also an area that is often not only too tight, but way too weak as well. If you, if you look at the comparison to professional sprinters, it's, a, it's like the muscle with the biggest difference between just average normal people and professional sprinters, it's the hip flexors. The stronger your hip flexors are, the less floppy you're gonna be running, the less you slam that knee, that whole lower, uh, that whole leg into the floor because it's gonna be easy to pick up. That's also something you wanna work on. Yeah, you think about it, if you get super Third strong step. in the quads, if you get super strong in the hips and your legs are heavier, but then you don't ever train your hip flexors, it's gonna be so much harder <laughs> exactly. to pick up the legs. Like if you never train your hip flexors exactly. whatsoever, and you're, you've built these heavy, heavy things, like how are you gonna be able to 100%. sprint through the thing? Even like kicking in football is super important because you're striking through. I like, for footballers, I actually probably like the straight leg raises because it is more, like you're never really in the spent leg position except when you're sprinting. I mean, you wanna train both really. Yeah. But the straight leg hits more of the rec fem hip, fle hip flexor. So when you're going through for striking power, I would say get stronger at like straight leg raises. Yeah, 100%. Do them hanging, do them in an L-sit position. Even adding a kettlebell, like I tried once, adding a kettlebell onto my, onto my foot. Insane. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm about to do. Really? Yeah. Sick. I'm gonna do it in between the, the top sets of step up. Yeah. And obviously like some muscles are smaller than others. So like here, we're doing loads of warm ups for the step ups, but in the hip flexes, I'm gonna then do them in my top sets of the step ups because the quads are a bigger muscle. So they need longer to warm up. They need more stimulus to them. The smaller the muscles are. So for example, the tibs is a really small muscle. So you don't need as many sets on that as you do on like quads or hamstrings, or whatever. You ever done the Ziani Gorilla push-up? No. I, I really so. like it. It's like you go like this and this and you just go. Basically you can do it like this, but you can also assist. What's that hitting the performance? Yeah, it's pretty similar. lifting the toes here as I straighten my leg gives me more of a stretch behind the knee right tightness behind the knee is something a lot of people struggle with as well especially when you're running a lot footballers yeah exactly and he's super flexible for his hamstring so it's like again you never stop going to the next thing nope. you can find ways to advance even more okay yeah. let's see if we've got the eight inches See going for eight inches. We'll see if we got it. The ankle mobility is feeling a, lot, a little stiff from the injury. Injury. Yeah. <laughs> Minor knock that would have. We'll see. Could have resulted in a worse injury if you weren't prepared. Hundred percent. That's the thing as well. It's like the benefit of doing all this stuff. Like you may still have an injury, but you're going to be able to recover so much faster. Our mate Tom. Yeah. He, he was doing all ATG before, dislocated his kneecap. Obviously, like you can theorize on if he was stronger in certain lifts, would have happened, but then it happened anyway. So four weeks after he's now running about, doing whatever, chilling. Whereas I talk to people in the DMs, we have a knee dislocation and it's like, yeah, they're, they're out for a long, long time. It happens again not able to do anything. So the fact that he's been able to recover that much in just four weeks, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. And it's due to like the training beforehand. And what he's done just right after. Yeah. Flossing, doing what he can, uh, what, what, what he was able to, like 
just walking backwards slight steps not working through pain the floss bands even like you can even use floss bands for a short range you don't even have to get into the full full knee bend if you yeah, can 100 it's still gonna have a similar effect of you're gonna feel that pump right you can go for lots of reps feel that pump muscle activation make your knee feel better i love the ACU mobility box as well because here i'm using it as a guide for my torso so one of the most important form points on the step up is that we don't bend our hips forward and we keep the load on the knee so if we have something like this and our back is up against it we can just mm. glide down and make sure the load is staying on the knee rather than on the hips that's sick yeah so yeah form points on the step up like like i said torso needs to stay upright we after most major knee injuries not all of them but the quads atrophy and we have this like limitation of actually using the knee joint and using the quads so having like i say having something behind you or just making sure that you're recording from a side, side angle and this torso mm -hmm. isn't coming in even the slightest little hip bend is going to put the load onto the glutes onto the hips so making sure it stays onto the knee it's a knee exercise also here we're coming out a little bit so it's not inwards over the the big toe it's more like down and out so yep. you come in here and that's going to activate the vmo a little bit more and just help the patella glide like usually i get people doing it and they're like i've got some pain i'm like just make sure that you're pointing it outwards instead of inwards the pain goes away it's just a comfortability thing as well yeah and there's these you see these minor form coachings that can make a huge difference and like no matter how good you are you're except it's susceptible if you're like ben patrick <laughs> I've been doing it for like 10 years, but no matter how good you think you are, there's still like some form cues that you may be missing. So always record yourself or have someone there to kind of say, yeah, just slightly do this because you're not perfect. So you may be thinking you're doing the split squat perfect or the step up perfect. And then you actually have a look at it and you're like, oh wait, that wasn't as good as I thought it was supposed to be. But yeah, now I'm going to do my top sets. I'm probably going to go 30, 40, 50, maybe 60, and in between each set, I'm gonna do hip flexor raises. Again, I'm just building up. So now, as I'm getting into my heavier sets, I'm not pushing the failure. I'm just getting the body used to it. So I'm just doing five reps here. I could probably do like 20 or something on it, but I don't wanna fatigue the muscles. I just wanna stimulate, and, and the knee joint, I just wanna stimulate it before I go into the heavier sets. Like I say, probably work up to about 50 kg and I'm 60 right now so nearly body weight and this mobility box is great for the hip flexor raises because you can put kettlebell in between here pick it up with your toes and then hit it yeah that's amazing this is the most effective way to actually really dig into these hip flexors picking yeah there's the leg nothing up. else i feel as much in like the deep psoas the deep hip flexor yep. here than the the kettlebell or the monkey foot raise like this if you want to hit the rec fem more like i say it's more of the front leg raise like with the straight leg so l sits hanging leg raises whatever you want to do but like this is the position that you sprint in so this is going to correlate most to it good stuff and on the other leg as well you can squeeze your glute right you want to be uh, squeeze that glute on that side boom hip flexor up here yeah strong oh. Oh. love it and there again i'm just matching the other side like i'm still even after all these days, I'm still a little bit stronger in my right on certain things like that. Haven't really done these too much. So now my body's getting used to it. Done 15 on this side, it was like super hard. Went to do 15 on this side, I could probably do a few more. Yeah. So I stopped at 15. 
because my other side couldn't do 15. Yeah. So you start on the weaker side and match it. Exactly. It's funny as well. You're right footed, right? You're yeah. using the right side a lot. Exactly. More. Like I'm kicking all the time. So that hip flexor is probably going to be stronger. And then this one is going to be a little bit more lengthened out because you're extending through that and you're kicking through with that. So it's just different positions you get into sport. Different things are going to be stronger. But find your imbalances. Like, obviously the principles are going to stay similar. Like you want to work off principles, not exercises, not uh, uh, like, obviously if you have a really good program, it can work for most people. But the most effective program is the one that targets your weak links. So if you have tight hamstrings and I don't, but you have super monster quads and I, I don't, I'm going to be hitting more of the quads. You're going to be hitting more of the lengthening of the hamstrings. Like that's, that's the beauty of programming. Not everyone's the same. Not everyone has knee pain for the same reasons. Not everyone has the same injury. Not everyone has the same goals. So the principles, the exercises stay similar. The program, the pro it is what mostly changes. You agree with that? Any thoughts, feelings? Yeah, the outcome really, like obviously I'm still, like my opinion is still that if you find something and even, even if you just see like slight progress 1% at a time, stick to it and, and don't try and go out there and see this bunch of different exercises. And uh, that's what I used to do. And like, you think you know how to combine it or whatever, like stick to what's been shown to work or actually, absolutely, as Liam said, get your situation assessed. Like if someone comes to us uh, and we move them through a workout like this, we're going to be able to see, okay, this is, or is missing what yeah. was the weak links like and, and then and we you can, can kind of see that, that. With, with a few exercises yeah obviously would what i usually do online is like give you a basic training program and then we'll assess you in the first like week or two and like exactly. see okay what's your weakest links there but if i have someone in person the things that i really want to see are like i mean the the atg split squat can really see like massive things so it could it could um see ankle mobility could see hip mobility could see knee strength um could see like imbalances side to side, so that's a massive one. Yep. Keegan also, and like Charles Pollock and people like that, like the overhead squat um, as one. You can see what's kind of going on with your body, you can pick out certain things from that. And then, yeah, from, from there, it's just like running people through the exercise and seeing what they can do, what they can't do, and Absolutely. going to whatever level they're at. And I want to touch a little bit on the mind side of stuff as well, I, I mean, I love the mind side of yeah. stuff, but exercises, training, all this kind of stuff is amazing, but what's really gonna get you the results it is your belief in whatever it is you're doing. So one of the reasons that ATG is so beautiful is that it has so much belief behind it, it has such a positive energy. And if you like believe that something's gonna help you, it's most likely it will, those placebo effects and stuff like that. Like obviously the exercises are amazing, like just the just understand the exercise and what they actually do amazing but it's like the also the belief behind it. if if i have two people come to me and one believe the hg split squats going to help them loads and one believes now the hg split squats is a load of rubbish <laughs> the one that believes the hg split squats going to help them is going to get a lot further you got stuff to say on the mind yeah uh, no it, it's you nailed you nailed the point here like it's that's why i keep posting keep believing today it's not only a reminder to all of you, like I personally struggle with this as well, like seeing all these success stories, right? And, and the people who do this exercise and you think, ah, there, there gotta be more, like there has to be more. Well, right, there could be more, but what if you just stayed consistent with what we're putting out there? Like if you want more help, reach out to us. But the thing is we're doing this, we're recording this, this is what we do, right? There's, there's no secret or whatever. Like this is this is the beauty out of it, and and you need to, yeah, the, having the belief with all the goals you have, like all the goals you really would want to achieve in life. It's all about the belief, um, and then that's a dream as well. If you have a dream, you need to believe in to, in, in that dream. Like you can't like, but that's that's the difficulty. That's a whole difficulty of it because everyone as a kid dreams and then suddenly as they get 
older and they, they grow up, this dream fades away. And I, I just like, once I realized, okay, look, I need to fix my body. I need to be able to go back and play football, actually follow my dream, actually follow my passion. This is what it's all about, right? It's, it's not about, uh, okay, this person's saying, yeah, it's not like you can't do it, whatever. Believe no matter which, what, what you're talking about, it's, it's the absolute key. And, and like chronic knee pain, Liam struggled with it for, for five years, right? I've been struggling with patella tendonitis at Oscar Schlaughter's and I avoided this knee for so long, over seven years, on and off, causing issues. And after such a long time, it's, it's not easy to get the belief back into your knee, but that's what we're trying to do. Like, light that fire up again, you can actually do it. Like if Liam does it, if, if I'm seeing so much progress, like my knee feels better than ever now. I used to not be able to sit in these positions because I avoided it for so long, it was painful. And now between every set, I actually get into this position, normal resting position, just feels good. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, as human beings, we have a nature to think that other people can do more stuff and we yeah. can do less. Like, Messi's just a person, Neymar's just a person, I'm just a person. I suffered with five years of chronic knee pain, ACL meniscus, um, snap kneecap, surgery, tendon issues. People see my story and they're like, yeah, you had all this, but I can't do it. <laughs> Why would you even let yourself think that? Don't let your mind fail before your, your body. So, oh sorry, you're about to use this. Yeah. So, yeah. And that, that comes with anything like, What's, so say you want something, say it's a goal of fixing your knee issues. If, if you go into it automatically thinking that it's not gonna get fixed, you've already, you've already lost. <laughs> and if you go into it thinking that it's good, you're gonna fix your knee issues, that there's, there's no downside to it. There's no downside to being positive. The only thing that can come out of it is that you don't get the results. Whereas you're trying, you're actually doing something to get there. But if you already limit yourself from your mind, then there's no point of even trying because it's always going to be the same result. Like, 100%. There's no, there's no point not believing. There's no downside to it. Yeah, at first, like the change has to come in the mind first. Yeah. Right, and then that, that's when the change happens in real life as well. Well, yeah, there's people try and change effects by changing effects. Whereas we're spiritual beings, so the spirit is the, is the cause and then the physical manifestation is the effect. So why are we trying to, affect, <laughs> why are we trying to change the, the physical by changing the physical when it's effect, changing by an effect? If you first don't change it in your mind, you're always going to stay in knee pain. If you, you, if you always say, yeah, I'm in knee pain, like it's not getting fixed, this and that, you're always going to stay there. Like, in the gym, don't let your mind, also don't let your mind fail before your body. So if you don't want to go, like, if you, if you, for example, just a random example, like pick up fours for a workout and you think that's all you could do, <laughs> and then you don't let your kind of, like, so you do the fours and it feel good and you're like, oh, I'll probably leave it there for the day because I know I can't do sixes or I know I can't do eights. How do you know unless you try? If you pick up the sixes and you go to do it and it hurts, put it down. You're not going to do any damage. But if you can do the fours and it's pain free, pick up the eights, go for it. Don't let your, your mind fail before your body. Like if there's something going on with your body, amazing, put it down. But if, if, it's, if it's a failure of your mind and not the body, you, you've failed. <laughs> like you're never going to get anywhere. Like you've got to change the mind. Got to change the mind. Uh, the minute I stopped identifying with I have knee pain, um, I'm not back to football, and started identifying with, like I said this to Kadeem, play, play five minutes a day. Can you play a minute a day? Can you play two minutes a day? Hello, <laughs> catch me. If you can play like one, two minutes, you're back to football. You don't have to be back to a, to a full game to say, you're, you're back to football. What are you doing? You want to train ATG? You do some split squats? You do some split squats? Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? It's absolutely true, like, 
you open my eyes there like it's you gotta start somewhere right if you keep telling yourself okay now nah, i can't i can't and you never actually start it's never actually gonna change so and it's ridiculous how much progress you can make by just getting one percent better at a time like let's say you get one percent better each day it takes a hundred day until you're you're at like 100 percent obviously progress is not always linear right that's like you could be working for weeks and weeks and only see minimal progress and then you get that breakthrough boom you've deserved it because you stay consistent even when when it wasn't maybe the most progress right but that's that's how you keep going but yeah like also like when i first started acg i couldn't i i couldn't do a, a step up without pain really so it's funny how like now I can do 50 kg step ups because I've done them three times a week for three years. Who else has been that consistent? The only other people that have been that consistent have got the same results. <laughs> what, <what's he> <laughs> I, we talked to this guy on, on the call the other day. He was like, yeah, knee flexion is my, my main issue. Like the knee bend's not going to name any names, but if you're watching this, you know, you're like, <laughs> um, like, what should I do? I was like, how are your ATG split scores coming along? I haven't done them in a while. What are you doing instead? Well, I'm doing single leg butt squats. So you're not even testing your knee flexion. Like, were you making, I said this, were you making progress with the HD split squat? Yeah, I was. So why'd you stop doing it? I don't know, I just wanted to do something else. Okay, so you, you got shiny object syndrome, you got bored. Do the same thing every day for, for years on end. Obviously, do it at your level do whatever but there's solutions to things but if you're not going to stay consistent with any route you choose whatever the route is whether it's atg whether it's whatever if you don't stay consistent for five years for 10 years don't come to me complaining that it doesn't work for you if you haven't done it for five years for anything for your knee for five years why why are you complaining yeah. your knee's been messed up for five years yeah. so how do you expect your, your knee to get fixed in three months 100 percent. that's not how it works you make great progress in three six months you're not going to get to this standard in, in three, six months. Yeah. Well, most likely. I don't want to put you down. Yeah, like you, you don't have to, to limit yourself. And like, if you know you're doing the best you can, that, that's it, right? There is ways to accelerate, accelerate the progress, obviously. But it's, it always comes down to like what, what your goal is and what it takes to get there. Realize that. Get that realization for yourself, right? Know if, if you need to be back in in six months then you're gonna do what's shown to get you there most effectively it's not it's not gonna be trying out all the different stuff and not staying consistent with it it's finding something that's good for you staying consistent with that for six months learning all you need and and, and getting all the knowledge from someone that's already done it that's how you get the fastest progress but it's it all depends on your goals really like if if you know you're, you're in for for the long game there's really no way you shouldn't be working on that every single day. Like you don't have to go heavy every single day. Just sitting, getting, getting your body comfortable. Like, can you sit in this position for minutes and minutes and even an hour, whatever. Like if I sit in this for more than 10 minutes, if I get up, like I feel it. It's because we don't use our bodies like they're meant to be used. Like we're not meant to sit in chairs and let our bodies get weak there. We see the effects of it. Strengthening the hip flexors is one way to reverse that. Getting more onto the floor, sitting on the floor. Like, <laughs> I'm even sleeping on the floor at this point. Um, but yeah, it's like, you can, you can, you will find, actually you will find what's, what's gonna work for you uh, as long as you keep searching for it and as long as you keep believing in it, you, you're gonna find the, the guidance you need uh yeah the exact route you, that, that that gets you there eventually what's next squats nordics squats nordics good stuff i'll do one more set hip flexors really hard and then for me it's split squats nordics oh what a little tight a little in, tight in the glutes in the glutes in the old gluteys yeah, fashion driven fashion driven Getting sore in the glutes, yeah? This needs to be a little bit higher, this right. But yeah, I've, also, I've always been posterior dominant ever since my 
knee injury so I do a lot more volume for my quads than I do for my posterior chain like I can do um, like 30 Nordics in a row but my quads quite, aren't quite up to that standard comparatively I can still do crazy stuff with it I can still do like 10 reverse Nordics but my squat isn't where I want it to be so we work we do more sets of squats how are you going to get better squats? do more squats <laughs> do some split squats, do some single leg variations see what happens um, Whoa. I need to make this higher I love this exercise so you see I'm doing squats with a slam ball right now it's going to make it more knee dominant more shift the focus more onto the quads like we knew this for a while in ATG but there's now studies coming out showing that when you elevate the heel in certain exercises the VMO gets acted more, activated more the VMO is the first muscle, it's the closest muscle to the knee it's the first one under pressure um, first one that activates when your knee is under pressure so obviously all your quads are going to grow if you're doing quad activities but Usually there, there's some kind of VMO weakness, not all the time. People, there's loads of different stuff, like people's knees can't bend, they've got weak quads in general, their VMOs are weak, so yeah, but the more elevated your heels are gonna be, the more knee dominant it's gonna be, the flatter your heels, the more hips, the more glutes. So if you are strong in the hips and the glutes, but you're weak in the knees, it's got this way. If you're strong in the knees and the quads, but you're weak in the hips, it's got the other way. You can you can find what's best for you. What are we yeah. saying? Get off. You need Back the to Nordics. the Nordics. <laughs> Get off. I'm resting. Get out of the way. Right. So Wait, did you do squats? I just done a warm up set of the bar. Okay. Oh, this is just a warm up. I'm gonna do some eccentric controlled reps. What would you want me to do today? Do you want me to do weighted Nordics, decline Nordics, just full reps? Like, what do you want me to do? The reps. The reps. You want me or, to see how many I can get? Yeah. Why not? Okay, obviously it's the, day, it's the day after football, so I may not be able to get as many as I could before, but we'll see. Right now, you want to control the eccentric. You don't want to rush into the stuff that I'm doing. Obviously, I'm quite advanced now. Like, the main goal for the Nordics is to be able to control all the way down. So even in this position here, see how I'm holding that and I'm controlling that. That's where the ligaments, the tendons, the hamstrings behind the knee are so activated it's a it's a somewhat long range exercise short range would be like hamstring curl long range would be this even more long range would be like rdls but that's more like hip extension and stuff for long range knee flexion nordics are the hardest because like when the when you're up here in that shortened position it's not really it's not under any kind of tension yeah. but when you're down here and the hamstrings are lengthened it's Pure tension. Exactly. And this is the position where most ACL tears actually happen in that last 30 degrees. Like this is, and, and when you're sprinting as well, like boom, this is where your hamstrings have to be strong, contract the whole, from the fit, feet yep. up and you're pushing the feet into that back thing. Yep. That's why having a proper Nordic setup is, uh, can really change the game for you as well. Like I've made so much more progress with Nordics once I got into the gym, got a proper setup. You have to get creative sometimes like this this is obviously amazing but I, if you can somehow work on nordics try and do it some most yeah, effective Nordstick, way it's like 30 quid yeah or like get someone to hold you down as get well someone to hold you down yeah. get i used to um get a, a weight like a power lifter belt and attach it around my heels on a bench you can do loads of different things hamstring curl machines are good as well it's just not going to be as joint dominant whereas the nordic's going to be more the, the joints um, as well but the Nordic's an amazing exercise amazing exercise but yeah the first goal is just holding all the way down making sure you work from slow to fast like you don't want to like try concentric first because you probably get injured that's where the tweaks happen like get good at the eccentrics to start with yep see what we can do let's go ATG split squats as well for me starting with no weight building up with the sets going really slow and control like you want to be in control on every single inch of 
the range of motion you're going through right you don't want to be bouncing like you want to be especially if you're in knee pain this is what helps you to actually feel out your limit I was all actually right. about to say that with the squats. It's like you have to have yeah. control in all of the range of the knee. So when you get down to this bottom range, even in a squat, like I could do a lot more weight if I didn't control all the way down here and actually like make sure that my knee can handle this weight in the bottom portion. But that's the benefit of the AT split squat. The real tension is in this end portion. We're getting that full knee bend and there's going to be more adaptations to the connective tissue. Some of it's going to be compressed, like the meniscus, the cartilage, some of it's going to be lengthened out the quad tendon, the patella tendon, get strong in a full knee bend, control it. You want to be strong in all ranges. Like we're not saying don't do partial reps. We, we do step ups, we just done step ups. But okay, we want to be strong here. We also want to be strong down here. Yeah. What's, what's the bad about that? Yeah. It's literally a human, basic human function, being like, able to be, and sit in a deep squat like this, boom. And when you're doing a squat, you want to be able to stop the weight at any time. So if Kadeem told me to stop at any point, stop. Stop. I can hold yeah. that there. Stop. Okay, cool. Stop. Dominating stop. the weight. Stop. I can, can, I can yeah. stop in any portion of the movement. Like, if you do that, your knees are going to be so much healthier than if you can just do box squats, quarter squats, powering up the hips and the glutes yeah. and not able to control that thing. Because if we're getting all this power from the glutes and then that goes so if we push off with our glutes we've got so much power here but our knees can't handle that same power knees gone like make sure the knees can handle the force you're producing yeah this is probably the most important thing i've, I've, I've learned so far through through the whole thing because you always want to be running faster jumping higher doing all the crazy stuff but in the end if you can't handle the the, the force you're producing it's like that, that's why so many like talented ballers or you, you think like you see athletes they're amazing they're fast they jump high but then suddenly like they're they're gone why because they got injured they produce like the more force you produce the more force you've got to be able to handle that's why an 80 year old is, is probably not gonna get injured when he's running because he simply can't <laughs> produce a lot of force right he's he's not gonna jump that high that as when he as when he lands the knees are not going to be able to handle it strong and like i could use a lot more weight if i squatted to less range of motion if i didn't control it as much as i want to so if your ego wants you to do that cool do that get injured if you if you want to look weaker in the gym and then go out on your field and be able to handle the right positions i know what i would rather i don't want to get injured <laughs> yeah Yeah, and I was feeling a little bit of tightness there behind the, 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 the knee on that squat. So I'm just going to open it up with slant calf, really dig behind that knee. So when I go into the squat, it then feels a lot better. There was like a little pulling in the thing. I think it's just soreness from the game yesterday. But you see the, the form here on the split squat. Torso staying, staying up, knees going out first, and then he's sinking down into it. This back foot, I mean, you can't really see it on camera, but back foot's out. So yeah, we're digging in, we're digging in with the toes. It's also yeah. out, so we get that stretch, stretch. on the back hip flexor. Like every, back glute, back, back glute is squeezed. Back glute is squeezed, exactly. In the bottom portion, I'm squeezing my hamstrings and calves. Yeah, we get that full um, knee close, closing. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of things to think about on the ATG split squat, but take it one at a time like watch this video over and over again yo and actually start to Go tweak one now. thing okay now you can focus on really getting that full deep knee bend staying in control next time you focus more on keeping that leg straight it's yeah it's all about learning improving every single time not just running through the motions without intent yeah and I'm, I'm about to run through the motions without intent right now i'm gonna smash out as many nordics as possible <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. You got uh, what you're about to see is like, yeah. I like haven't done them. Work for I haven't years. done them in, in a few weeks. To be fair, yeah. give me a little bit of grace. My max I've done, I think, is 27 in one set. Yeah. We'll see. I've seen it. I we'll mean. see. All eyes on Liam. That's what I'm saying. Let's go. Come on. Let's 
strong, locked in. An amazing form as well, like you probably can't see it from that angle, but it makes a huge difference whether, whether or not you keep your torso upright when you're coming up, or you just shift the hips back and then come up with the torso. You see, it's a straight line, it's not moving. Strict. I'm like, I'm on fire now, but I can still bang the reps. Don't let your mind fail <laughs> for your body. Control. Crazy. Oh, I think that's 17. 17, all right, keep going. Uh, Want to see more? Push the feet in. Yep. Uh, Come on. And my lower, like my whole posterior chain is, is smoked. My lower back. Lower back even. It's like that, that's it. Like your, your, your body works as a whole. My glutes. This is an amazing exercise. My calves. Everything's getting smoked. Yep. Uh, Come on. Yeah. What's that, 22? We have to see afterwards. Yeah, I haven't counted we'll Probably really. blend in a number. Yeah. Insane, insane. Look at how he's fighting. Come on. This is where the gains are coming for him, right? He's, he's at such a high level. He has to actually either load, tempo is a huge factor as well. And then and obviously like, go for high reps. Even on these, I'm still controlling the eccentric. Yeah. The eccentric is where you're going to make the most oh. gains. You're going to get the most muscle Come adaptations. On. Let's go. See if we can do a mic in the way <laughs> right now. To finish off, easy. Look at this. Yeah, let's go. One more and I think it's 30. Wow, Let this is see. absolutely insane. Love it. Go on. Yeah, 31. Keep on counting. There you go. Well done. No, this I'd have is to count insane. it, but I'd have to count yeah, it. Yeah, we'll, we'll blend in a number for sure. Um, how many reps he's done oh. for me it's going to be easier we can you can count with me probably on one hand but it's still like <laughs> are you gonna go i'm gonna go now but uh oh. obviously nordics is like this is something you got to be patient with right get the right setup and then just I, keep working keep working i Even do just i do think that like pull ups though like as soon as you get one pull up one two three yeah. four like this come yeah. the hardest thing is getting your first one yeah. once you get your first one I think I got my first one about a year ago, yep. and now I can do 30, but then I am like, I just do relative strength, like, yep. don't train my upper body as much as I should, don't put on loads of weight, but I'm a footballer, mm -hmm. like, if I'm just relatively strong in the knees, oh, I'm happy, Yeah. I don't care what people say, skinny, yeah, set, set priorities, whatever, man. like, how many, how many people are saying I'm skinny, can do 30 Nordics. Yeah, like in, who's in, more protected? You ain't got to be Adam Traoré to, to 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 be able to play football pain-free after five years of chronic knee pain and whatever. Like, it's all about finding what what's important to you and then working on that. Like, if you try and focus on too many things, it's it's often like you're not gonna make the same progress as when you actually focus on one thing that's most important for you right now. And then you set like everything, not only the time, the effort, the money you have, everything you put it into that. And, and you're going you're gonna to see results. 100%. All right, let's go. Come on then. Usually I do some hamstring curls beforehand, but I've done a lot of work. Have you done any? Work. What? Have you done any sets? No. Yeah, you probably shouldn't do max reps right now. Just warm it up. Yeah. Get eccentrics and then we'll do it after. Yeah, all right. Just in case. Yeah, this feels good though, this machine. Yeah, the, the machine's insane. It feels really Shout out good. Shout out Free Cathlete. <laughs> it's so comfortable and it's like, it makes it so much easier to do the Nordics. Yeah. Like Tom, I've had so many people hit their first Nordic on that. Tom, Henry. Really? Like, they, they come and they've like, never done a Nordic before and then they, they come and they do it <laughs> on that and they're like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it, all right, let's go. Maybe that's my... That's my secret, it's just that bench. <laughs> yeah, it's not actually so. how many Nordics I can do. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's see what's, happen what's happening. Come on. Trying to get. Here we go. Up. Yeah, like the angle of the torso, like look at it. So good, like it's, it's pure control. 
kind of don't let the body fail before the mind and I mean if you could see it from my angle the tendons the ligaments in the back of the knee I can literally see them lighting up like you don't see that on a normal hamstring machine like everything's working behind there come on keep going you gotta have five ten more come up no come and that, that's down. why I keep going get down you think I can Go. do more keep going keep going <laughs> explode come on up down up, let's go. Come, more, more. It's all in the mind. See, bro was gonna stop and then he got two more because I told him to get two more. Yeah, it's. Dude's always doing that. <laughs> it's actually no. You gotta stop. <laughs> it's. It's really all in the mind. If you think it's about. all in the mind. Don't let your mind, mind fail before your body. So that's good to have a training partner. Absolutely. And now I'm gonna go for some eccentrics. Just really control. Did I do this weight? Don't know. Until you're down. Go up. Control. I think I would be done that way. Ooh. And I'm, I'm not trying to break down my tissues loads right now. So I'm not going to do higher reps on, I mean, I did on Lawrence, I probably shouldn't have. But I played football yesterday. Usually I like to do lower reps so it's not breaking down all the muscle tissue because when you're playing football, that's like pure endurance. Like your muscles aren't doing like one rep maxes, they're doing a thousand rep maxes. How many times are you getting ground contacts in a game? So I like to do the opposite of that when I lift the day after so I like to do maximum five reps on a squat maybe even lower a couple reps but just building that maximal strength um, that's all you really need for for knees is to get your body weight down knee strength up chilling absolutely chilling and still every single weight Full control. Full control. See how he's pausing in the bottom position as well, not bouncing out. That, like there's different variations. You'll see people bouncing it out. Yeah. It's great as well. But if you're rebuilding, it's safest. Gonna make the most, most gains, safe gains. That's what we want, safe gains. Like, doesn't like, it, it's there's no point in risking going one step forward, two steps back. Like this is not it, like safe gains, controlling. Yeah, and, and bouncing out isn't necessarily bad, but it's just different, different, it's not what different you things. Yeah. So like, if you're coming back from an injury, go slower, control even more. If you're like going for pure, like explosive power in the gym, do some drop catches, do some other stuff. Yeah. You can play around with it. Like different, different goals, are different things that I like to just be as protected as possible so now that I'm playing a few times a week I can play in a full match and I'm playing whatever I'm getting those fast action things and I'll do pliers in my other leg days as well I'll do some more power stuff there so on this day I'm just gonna make sure the knees are feeling healthy put it for a full range of motion control the weight feel good Yeah. We're actually kind of going to go bar and back today. 20 kg, yeah. Like I have now 10 kg and then even more. 20 kg, bar and back. 10 kg, 20 kg, 30 kg, 40 kg, 50 Let's kg. Get it rolling. 60 kg. Where did you feel that? This one? Yeah. Through the whole knee, but also glute, even. And like, if you look at the back foot, it's a pure plantar fascia stretch right there. And look how much his toes are <laughs> bending over. It's, it's not like the ATG split squat is, has benefits to everything. Like, I mean, I'll go on the side so you can see it more. But if you, when I come down, look at how much my back foot is bent and the toes are digging into the ground. It's a plantar fascia stretch right there. Yeah, amazing stuff.
Right. All right. When you're not using the back, uh, the bar huh? anymore, I'll go for go for it then. Cool. I just got up already. Like last set, I'm yeah. about to do weighted Nordic. Oh, weighted. Let's go. I've still not been able to hit 15. I've tried it twice. Yeah. I can do 10 for about three. Well, my yeah, 10 is, is still insane. Weighted Nordics. How much of a difference do you feel it makes adding those 5kg just to get the people an idea of like what if you actually were 5kg like oh that's a massive difference like like i'm i'm pretty lean right now i could probably still drop an extra little bit of weight but if you got extra pounds on you like that like i could just i, I just done three reps so obviously my my hamstring is a torch from the 30 reps but i mean if i was fresh i'll probably be able to do that about 10. so it's about 20 20 reps less just by adding an extra 5 kg on so if you've got an extra 5 kg on your body and you're like that's so much more pressure on the knees like yeah. get relatively strong relatively strong not strong relatively strong if you want to play sport that is if you want to get strong get strong but relative strength is is most important for getting back to football like with any injury like you want to be lean. They used to call um, Usain Bolt's coach used to call him fat when he was eight <laughs> percent. Because as a sprinter, you need to be really, really lean. As a footballer, I want people like if they're going for pure performance, I want people under ten percent. But yeah, maybe even like eight percent, six percent, whatever it is. But that's where you're the fastest. That's where you have the most relative strength. That's where you feel the best. Well, depending on person to person. Yeah, I mean, you still got to have the energy, but it's all about like, you know, if you're like these small numbers, there, small percentages, it's really at the highest level. But yeah, the, the biggest difference is going to be the obvious stuff, you, you know, like if you have five, five kg too much, then it's it's simple. All right. The one kg, two kg, that's like these little percentages for the highest level. Sure. Next set. Yeah, probably just gonna do one rep. Like, I'll smash my legs on the other day, but. Yeah. But yeah, like I say, that's my body weight there that I just done there. Controlled all the way, relatively easy. And I'm like, I played a full football match yesterday, so. Like. <sighs> And it's more knee dominant squat as well, so you'll be even weaker there. But I want people on a slant squat hitting that easy. You got it. If you can't do that and you're trying to play football, like people always say to me in the DMs, like oh, I've been squatting, I've been squatting. Like I've been doing the stuff you do. Okay, have you? Let's see your form. Half squats, half split squats. I do split squats and squats. Yeah, cool. Yeah. You're, you're hit dominant. <laughs> no, no wonder your knees hurt. No wonder your ankles hurt. Yeah. Try to control that all the way down on a science squat instead of a normal squat. People want the weight. People don't want the want the healing. <laughs> I, I mean, people want both, but they they're more obsessed with the weight and think that's going to bring the healing when it's not. Yeah. It's not. It, it's all like, the knees know is tension. They don't know a number on the bar. Do you think your knee is going to communicate and be like, yeah, I know this is 60 kg right now. <laughs> what are we saying? Yeah, it's just reacting and adapting to what you put onto it. If you're not doing nothing, then it's adapting to that. It's getting weaker. That's why avoidance was one of my biggest enemies, right? Just seeing my knee being weak, tendonitis, degeneration, just avoiding is the worst thing you can probably do. Let's go. What do you say? Go on. Are you going with me or what? Okay, yeah, go on. Okay, let's go. that like that's the benefit of like reverse nordics nordics this kind of stuff 
it's so joint dominant. Like I felt that all through the knees. Kadeem's feeling that all through the back of the knees. This is the stuff that really bulletproofs you over time. Like the squats and all that kind of stuff will get you to this position. Like you wanna, if, if people really want extreme ability, Nordics, reverse Nordics, this joint adaptation is really where it needs to be. If I, if I take someone, if I get anyone doing like five, 10 Nordics and reverse Nordics, I don't think they're gonna have joint pain, to be honest. What do you think? Yeah, at least in the, in the exercise, these are primarily targeting. Sure. Like the, the the reverse Nordics there, like I, you don't feel anything else in the joints as much as that, and it's a body weight exercise. Yeah. Like squats, amazing. They're gonna really, really help. They're gonna bulletproof you over time. Obviously, don't just rush into reverse Nordics. Like that took me a long time to get to. But, woo, like, <laughs> like tell me, like when you do a hamstring curl machine compared to that, like I feel the hamstring curl machine in my hamstrings. That I feel inside my joints. That's gonna be in the next thing. Like people need to understand like joint dominance. Like yeah. if I put most people I put in a step up, they think they're super strong. They think they're super strong. I put them in a step up, their knee is yeah. all shaking. And this is like, I mean, I think I, I saw Zach just made a video of some guy came from like seven months post meniscus and they were telling him he was all right to play. Zach got him in, he could do like a two inch step up and he, he was ba like barely able to do that. And, and the doctors have signed him off saying, yeah, he's fine. What injury was it? ACL or? Meniscus. Meniscus. But like he can't do a two inch step up yeah, and they're saying you can play football. That's insane. Like it's joint dominance. Like they don't understand. Well, yeah. it depends who you talk to. Some physios do. Some physios are really good. Yeah. Just large majority probably yeah I mean, and it's the same with anything in life like a large majority of people are clueless and then you get a good percentage of people which are good yep it's, it is what it is all right let's sign off the video beautiful day out here kadeem's here this is probably going to be together in the future quite a bit once yep. he gets his visa you need to get your visa yep get it rolling bulletproof ballers coming any injury you've got and you want to make it back to football with the guys yeah message That's us on saying. instagram this is going to be on the new youtube page um, i'm also going to post it online you can also post it on yeah. your yeah. i'm just going to link the youtube channel in the feed as well but if you want coaching from either of us it'll be in the top line description de depending on what video you're on instagram is the best place to reach me but proof underscore baller Dim Dim yeah, ability. ability yeah let's get it rolling we're let's here to help you it's uh it's here to serve yeah and if you've watched until now you're on the right path definitely you know you want to do it so I'm saying, because we'll help, also like, like anyone with the issues right now they could do this workout at their level and just do this workout for the next three years at your level and build up over time no no pain this is it you're, you're gonna probably make some great strides so this yeah. is amazing value like use it absolutely man amazing yeah amazing stuff see Cheers you next time watching.